Hi everyone, welcome back to Wild Reads. Welcome back to another video. My name is Dave, and we are in the midst here of somewhat of a heat wave. Now I know that the, the reputation worldwide is for Brits to continually moan about the weather. Uh, and I've mentioned it on other videos, but there is no let up to this heat. It's been 32 degrees here today, and we're just not used to it. We kid ourselves that we are the toughest race in the world and we can put up with most things, but we've either got to have a cold snap and we're moaning, or we've even got to have a rough, uh, a really hot snap and we're moaning. And boy, are we moaning. This is really, really hot, really hot. Um, and it, it's an uncomfortable heat as well. It's not just the heat, it's just this sticky, muggy, humid. Um, anyway, that's enough about the weather. We are back from Hay and it's been over a week now since I've sat down to record any videos, so forgive me if I'm a little bit rusty, but I thought I would sit down uh, because I've got to do my books of the year so far, or my favourite books that I've read this year, so not necessarily published this year, but some of the best books that I've read this year. And I've got about eight or nine, so I've scanned my Goodreads and I've picked out eight or nine books um, that really stood out for me so far this year. But we are already, we are only a week or so into July and I've already read two books in July that I am sure will make it to my end of year list. So I haven't included them now because now is the books only from January to the end of June. So um, what should we start with? Let's start with this one here. This is uh, English Animals from Laura Kay. Now, a lot of other booktubers included this in their end of year lists last year. I've got to it a little bit later than others, um, but I really, really enjoyed it. This came out a year or so ago. It's got every ingredient that I like, or two of the main ingredients that I like in fiction. That is big country house and dysfunctional family. This is a story about Merka, who goes to work for a, a brother and sister, Richard and Sophie, at their big country house. And she gets involved in taxidermy. Um, one, one little warning for you, if you haven't read this book and you're a little bit squeamish, it does contain scenes of extreme um, taxidermy, um, which is the, the, the sort of stuffing and embalming and preserving of dead animals. Some of the scenes of that are quite graphic. If you're okay with that, then fine. If you're not, um, maybe just take it as a warning. But it's a fantastic read. Really, really good read. I think it's a debut novel, although Dave being Dave, he hasn't done his research properly before this video. Um, I, I believe it's a debut novel. Uh, if it is, it's very exciting. Um, because I would love to see what Laura Kay did next uh, or does next. It's a fantastic book and thoroughly recommended. Um, the next book on my little list is one I read fairly recently. This is a non-fiction and I have got a few non-fiction. I've read some cracking non-fiction this year already and we're only six months into the year. Uh, this is This Is Going To Hurt from Adam Kay. This came out a little while ago, and it's the Adam K used to be a junior doctor working in the NHS. The NHS in England has recently, to, well, within the last week or so, it's celebrated its 70th birthday. Um, this book is one of the funniest books I think I've ever read. It's a very, very serious subject, but it's an extremely funny, funny book. Adam Kay has got um, a very, very dry wit, and the way he tells this is, I mean, some of the stories are horrendous, uh, some of the things that he witnesses as a junior doctor. Um, but it really does highlight the, the need for us to fund our NHS service properly, because it really, it, what this book really highlights is the fantastic job that the people on the front line of the NHS do for us to keep us alive, basically, day in, day out, against the very harshest and very testing of circumstances. So it's a really, really good read. Uh, for a non-fiction book or for a fiction book, I haven't laughed so much in, well, I can't remember the last time I laughed as much. Uh, as I did when I was reading this. The last couple of chapters get very serious and they become less funny. Um, but it's not meant as a comedy book. It's just, it's just, it's like a comic tragedy really with just some of the things that can go wrong under pressure. But very, very entertaining read. 
the next one I've got is a little um, series of anecdotes, really. This is uh, Scribbles in the Margins by Daniel Gray, and this is 50 Eternal Delights of Books. Uh, and this is one of those sort of dip in, dip out books, just things about, it, it's basically a book about books. And I love a book about books. I've bought a couple recently in Hay, because we are back from our summer ho holly bobs in Hay on Wye, the book town, the international book town that is Hay on Wye. Um, but I've, I'll show you that in a book haul, in, a, free, in a, f uh, a future book haul. So this is Scribbles in the Margins, and it's basically 50 little anecdotes or 50 little stories about books. So we've got handwritten dedications in books, visiting someone's home and inspecting the bookshelves, impromptu bookmarks. I mean, some of the things that I use as bookmarks are, are, are ridiculous. I mean, I've got a whole drawer full of bookmarks that I've actually bought from shops, but I end up using things like train tickets and bus tickets and, well, not bus tickets, because I can't remember the last time I was on a bus. But I, use, I tend to use anything, a serviette from a restaurant, I tend to use anything other than a bookmark, which, which is crazy. Reading in bed, beginning a new book, when the lovers get together. So it's just, it's a really, really entertaining, oh look, this is something I don't use that I should, I should use these more. These little highlight things where you, I need to, I need to, I really do need to use these more, especially with non-fiction, when there's little passages that I want to remember. I keep forgetting I've got these. I shall leave them out as a reminder. Um, but yeah, wasn't expecting it to be as good as this, but I'm gonna dip in and out of this for years to come, probably. Um, really, really entertaining book. And it came out in, let me tell you when it came out. It came out in 2017. So that's Scribbles in the Margins by Daniel Gray. And that's published by Bloomsbury. Very, very good little book. Get on with some fiction. Um, a fiction pick, one of the best things I've read this year. This is the proof copy. This is Sal by Mick Kitson. This is available now in hardback from Canongate. Fantastic, fantastic story. Um, I'm not sure if it's uh, like a, a designed for a YA readership, but it's about two sisters who, the younger sister, um, she goes through something, she, she suffers abuse basically at home. And so the, the, the big sister, in an effort to protect her, takes her away and they run away to a forest. And the big sister has done her research. So she's, she's read some survival manuals, how to survive in a forest. She steals a credit card so they can survive. Um, it's, just a, it's just written in a way that's so, so convincing, it's so touching. And this was a debut novel as well. Uh, and it, it's fantastic, I absolutely loved it. So that's Sal from Mick Kitson, published by Canongate. Available now in hardback. Uh, the next book um, was quite a recent one, and one that I featured in my recent, my, my last uh, wrap up, and that is The Knots from Mark Kitson. I buddy read this with Brian from Brian's Bookshelves. I wasn't expecting it to be as good, but it was bloody fantastic. Uh, and I loved it, and I've put everything else that Mark Watson has written on uh, on a wish list, on a TBR. Um, yeah, so Mark Watson, The Knot, uh, it's about Dominic, he's a wedding photographer, this charts 50 years of his life, and his very unorthodox relationship with his sister. Um, it's very, very well written. Brian described it as literary fiction. I wouldn't, I'm not sure if I would go, if I wouldn't, I'm not sure if I would call it literary fiction. I think literary fiction is more prose and character driven rather than plot. And I think the plot is the main driver in this book. So I would maybe go with it being commercial fiction more than literary fiction. Or it might be one of those crossovers. We're getting a lot of crossover novels now um, that, that really cross the line between commercial and literary fiction. And to be honest, the, the distinction between the two can be a little bit blurred. And does it matter? Uh, what matters is that someone's there telling you a really, really good story, as Mark Watson does in this book. This is The Knot from Mark Watson. And it's made it onto my books, my favourite books of the year list so far. The next one um, I loved earlier in the year, this was The Chalk Man. This was the debut novel from C.J. Tudor. Um, about a group of friends. Uh, this is set in the mid 80s group of four school friends that discover a body. All kinds of creepy things start happening with these chalk figures. I loved it. It wasn't universally loved. 
Uh, I know, I know. Lauren and the books had a real issue with it. Um, uh, she, she, she. I think Lauren hated it, and she, she listened to it an audio book. Lauren hated it. I loved it, and we read it around about the same time. Um, it really did. It really did um, connect with me, and because I remember the eighties, and I remember being uh, the same age as these characters were in the eighties. So the little hints at nostalgia within this book, the bicycles they, they, you know, the the TV programs they watched, the magazines they read, the the just everything just resonated with me, and it was like being a school kid back in the 80s. It's a really, really creepy little thriller as well. Um, I think this is now available in paperback, but I'm not sure, I'll have to check for you. Um, but yeah, debut novel, CJ Tudor, I thought it was really, really good. The next one uh, that I've got for you is a, um, a book that gave me such a big book hangover. This was Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Oh my God, I love this book. Just the character of, I hope, I sort of really hope that Gail Honeyman brings Eleanor back in some form. And, and then a part of me thinks, well, maybe no, maybe you should just leave it where she is, just be a standalone, but she's so good. The character is so good. Um, and, you know, Eleanor is such a, I mean, really, she's got this inner strength. So it's, she's got this inner strength, but she's, she's at the same time so fragile and you just want to make a friend of her and you just want to give her a hug. And I, I love this book. Um, for those, uh, this has been immensely popular. This book, and it has sold thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of copies in this country. It's been um, shortlisted and longlisted for all kinds of awards. Um, I, I absolutely loved it, and I cannot wait to see what Gal Honeyman does next. She is just my kind of writer, uh, and this was just my kind of book. This is one of those rare books where, when you've read the first page you know you were going to love the book. So I, I think I tweeted at the time that I've read the first page of this book. I know I'm going to love it. You just instantly, there's just that instant connect with the characters and the style of writing. Brilliant. Uh, the next one I, I, is another non-fiction book. Um, and I spoke about this in my last wrap up as well. This was Educated by Tara Westover. An absolutely incredible book. An incredible story of how this young lady grew up in um, exceptionally tough circumstances. I mean, exceptionally tough circumstances. She was a really strict, orthodox Mormon family. What this young lady has gone on to achieve is nothing short of, of, of miraculous because she's had such a tough time and such a tough upbringing. I mean, incredible, incredible story. And to go on to achieve what she's gone on to achieve, the, the Cambridge, uh, you know, a degree at Cambridge, I think an honours degree at Harvard, a PhD, I mean, she, incredible, incredible story. And how that thirst for education just drives someone on. Brilliant, recommend it to anyone, fantastic book. And the last book I've got for you is uh, the second novel from Ruth Hogan. This was The Wisdom of Sally Redshoes um, from, from the brilliant Ruth Hogan. Um, and I was very lucky to go to the launch party of this in Bedford as well. Um, and we had a fantastic time. So last year I gave my book of the year to The Keeper of Lost Things, the debut novel from Ruth Hogan. This it was the follow-up. I was really nervous before reading this because I really wanted... And I was so scared that I wasn't going to love it, but I did, um, and it's brilliant. And I hear on the grapevine from Ruth's editor that her third book is even better than the first two. So I'm, and that's I think coming out next year. So I'm absolutely excited about that. I cannot wait to read that and see what happens with Ruth's third book. So the wisdom of Sally Redshoes follows um, Marsha, who's suffered. Um, every parent's worst nightmare, the death of a child. And she's her life has been suspended, really, in a state of, of grief. Um, and she's, she's, she's taken to almost drowning herself to, to get close, because her, her little boy was drowned. She's taken to almost drowning herself to sort of connect with her, her dead child's spirit. And she wanders around graveyards, and uh, which, which sounds, it sounds hideously depressive, but it's not. Because it, it, it's, it, this book has got real light and shade. It's got some very dark moments, but it's got some uplifting moments as well. And it's probably a lot darker than her first novel, 
but there is so much light and shade within Ruth Hogan's writing and her characters are just fabulously eccentric. Um, the Kitty Muriel and of course the mysterious uh, Sally Redshoes herself. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely loved it. Couldn't put it down when I started it um, and I can't wait to see what Ruth Hogan writes next because she is... She is, um, she's one of my absolute favourite writers now, uh, without a doubt. So that was it. That was the best books that I've read so far this year. And I've read some absolute corkers. There were probably some that maybe were on the borderline of being on that list, but didn't quite make it. I'm just going to adjust this lighting a little bit here because it seems to have gone a little bit dark. So yeah, what have been your favourite books this year? Please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinion on the books that I've picked and I'd love to hear what books have been your favourite so far this year. Uh, that's it for another video. Thank you very much for watching. Whatever you're doing this week, enjoy your books and I'll see you next time for another BookTube video. Take care, see you soon. Bye-bye.